So let us have a view now of the society in the year 1750, 23 years earlier. The main apostolate, the main of the society at that time was education. And we Jesuits, the Society of Jesus at that time had 24 universities and 817 colleges. The word college in French and in Spanish language stands for what we would say school. A school mm, from the first standard to the pre-university, that is high school also. We had 817 Practically 90% of the, you know, of the education of all those countries and Latin America was in the hands of the Jesuits. And practically everybody that counted something in Europe of that time, both in the ecclesiastical um, circles and in civil society, ministers of the government, uh, great merchants and so on, all of them had passed through the portals of the Jesuit schools. It means that um, the influence and, you can say, the power of the society was immense. And therefore, that created two kinds of enemies. Enemies that um, from within the church and enemies from without the church. Enemies from within the church, obviously, many of the old religious congregations felt a sense of jealousy and the Dominicans, the Benedictines, who were running schools, and the Augustinians. Um, and third, within the church we had the very, very serious opposition and enmity of the Jansenists. Uh, well, the Jesuits uh, stood for the freedom personal freedom of the individual. Pope Gregory XIV, he sent to the East to check the Jesuit um, preaching in Malabar and in China, Richie, to a cardinal, the Courton, that was a Paca Jansenist, French Jansenist. He came to Pondicherry. In Pondicherry, he did not dare to come down from the on the French boat, there and then he condemned what they call the Malabar rites. Vilios Rada, historian of the church, tells us that the internal opposition would have not been able to suppress the society because, in general, the popes were all for the society and the people were with us. It is the external opposition and who were those who were? Uh, the forces that come under the general name in English language of the Enlightenment. Now, the Enlightenment of the 17th, 18th century um, had um, great eminent people in uh, Germany, in England. Those did not um, worry us. They were, they were sober enough. But in France, it was a terrible situation. The, Three names, D'Alembert, Diderot, and especially Voltaire. Voltaire has been the European writer that has had more influence in the people of his generation. I think that any other writer after, the, after him, possibly with the possible exception of Marx, I don't think any other writer had such. He was passionately opposed to anything that was religion, organized religion, revealed religion, the Pope, and therefore his hatred of the Jesuits was uh, immense. In Portugal, there was a king in Portugal, Joseph I, who was an idiot, like many of the kings at that time, the Spanish king also, and the French also. Uh, he, there was a, his minister, the Marquis of Pombal, was all powerful, and it was, the king was a toy in his hands. This king had the practice of visiting frequently the houses of prostitution in the suburbs of Lisbon. In one occasion, when coming out in the house of prostitution, there was a group of people that attacked him, 
and they say, we're going to murder him, to assassinate you, you are... And there was a group of policemen somewhere appeared and saved him. Now, the historians agree today that that was simply... Mm, the whole thing, a uh, uh, manipulation, uh, prepared by Pombar himself. He had the police there ready and accused the Jesuits of having sent that group to assassinate him. The Jesuits were expelled because they were totally corrupt, with vices abominable, they were incorrigible rebels, traitors and aggressors, beautiful. The order came to Goa. Mm, all Jesuits that were not clever enough to run away from Goa to Bijapur or Kerala, they were taken. And the police in Goa was as brutal as the, or more than the one of Portugal. And they chose one Jesuit, Father Gabriel Malagrida, 73 years old, who had been a missionary in the jungles of of Marañón, that is in Brazil, the jungle is there, between Brazil and Peru, considered a saint, a man of prayer. He was taken, was presented to the Inquisition, determined that he was a heretic. So Father Malagrida was burnt alive, like all good heretics have to be, burnt alive in the main square of Lisbon in, in the presence of the king and of the nobles. In France, France was the center of the movement of opposition by Voltaire. Practically, many of the members of the Parliament of Paris were poisoned by the writings of Voltaire, terribly against the church, against the... It was like a passion in him. To all this was added the unfortunate Lavalette incident that had repercussions in the whole of Europe. Lavalette was uh, Anthony Lavalette was a Jesuit, uh, intelligent and enterprising, and he was put in charge of the economic situation of all the French missions in Martinique and Guadeloupe, what is today precisely the, between Cuba and the United States. Uh, there were still several French possessions there. He was procurator general, and he did much to improve the economic situation of the missions. But he was so successful and he went out of control. Unfortunately, poor Father Lavalette was not his fault. He organized two ships full with uh, sugar and coffee from the Bahamas and sent them to France. But in the middle of the sea, high Atlantic Sea, the two ships were captured by English pirates and for the thousands of um, people in France, were shouting to the king and the king and the parliament, and the king was unable to stand that movement and has to, uh, to sign the document of expulsion of the Jesuits and obviously taking up all the properties of the Jesuits. For years, the Bourbon courts have been asking from the Pope, you expel, no, suppress the Society of Jesus. Clement XIII said, you cut my hand, but I will never sign a document. The Society of Jesus is the most, uh, the holiest of all the uh, orders, and the uh, main uh, support of the papacy. But he was ready to believe anything they, they said. So the Jesuits were spoiling him. Anything that happened in Madrid, the fall was the Jesuits. Some wells had been poisoned, the Jesuits. And especially there was the mutiny of Esquilache, it's called. Esquilache Motin in Spanish, where the people of Madrid, hundreds of thousands, got up and went to the royal palace to demand that the king hands over to them Minister Esquilache. He was an Italian minister, or home minister then. Um, and the king, the minister told the king, these people want to kill you. So the Jesuits, <laughs> and they, they were no photos at that time, but they said, we have seen a number of Jesuits among the crowd. The king, to save his life, had to uh, run away with the greatest humiliation of his life, from secret passage from the palace. And so that 
this Jesuits have to be. Uh, it was very simple. The Royal Council wrote the document, and the king signed it. And the Jesuits were expelled. Why? Having heard the opinion of my Royal Council, and moved by extremely grave reasons, which I choose to keep secret in my royal breast, I hear my command to expel the Jesuits from all our territories and take over all their earthly possessions. 5,000 Jesuits, a special policeman came in Zaragoza at the seminary on a visit to get the young Joseph Pignatelli out. Joseph is a novice. Joseph Pignatelli, I don't leave these people, but your family wants. She was a noble family, aristocratic. I don't leave the Jesuits. So he went with the Jesuits, who uh, canonized uh, Saint Joseph Pignatelli. Came in the time he died on the 2nd of February, 1769. 69. And on the 15th of February, that is only 13 days later, the conclave met to choose a new pope. And there, with the cardinals of Rome, France came, Germany came, they were the representatives, that is, ambassadors of Portugal, Spain, and France. And the two Spanish cardinals who came and shamelessly announced there that they, did, they were not coming to choose a new pope. They were coming to suppress the Society of Jesus by command of their king, Charles III. There were 43 cardinals, of which this Spanish ambassador, French ambassador, they knew that about 25 they have studied were friendly with the Jesuits. So those were names were removed from their list. And the remaining, there were three or four inimical to the Jesuits, hostile, uh, but they knew that these were not easily be chosen. So they preferred to choose a man that was neutral, but that was weak in character. He was a holy and pious man. So Cardinal Ganganelli was chosen by command of those three um, ambassadors because the majority of cardinals were uh, from Spain, Portugal, France, and Italy. Ganganelli was chosen. From the very beginning, he felt the pressure of those Bourbon courts. For two years, he refused to sign anything against the Jesuits. He refused to receive the Jesuits. When the, when the general, according to the rule of St. Ignatius, had to go, the new general, to a new pope, and incline himself, kiss his feet, and offer, he didn't want to. He only just hand and send him away. If the Jesuit appeared where he was going through the wrong city, the wrong he looked to the other side. So, to, to show the people that he was not pro Jesuit. But he was not wanting to sign. Then finally, the King of Spain sent Count of Florida Blanca, one Joseph Monino, or the name Monino in Spanish. He was a man very harsh, able to, to move mountains. So he went there from the first day. He told the Pope, don't play games. We want you to suppress the society giving promises to him. Every day was there. The suppression of the society. Until finally they began talking that Spain and France are thinking of setting national churches separated from Rome as England, unless you suppress the society. And in order <laughs> that nobody should know anything until the time in which it was published, it was not printed in the Vatican. It was printed in a secret press that the Spanish embassy had uh, in the underground rooms of the Spanish embassy. It was printed there, this brief. It's well known. And then one day suddenly, it was uh, published in Rome to everybody. The Jesuits were condemned to disappear forever and everywhere. No reasons were given. When someone asks the Pope, you have to give reasons, he says, the reasons are that the good of the church demands it. When the, the Bourbon kings 
realize that the Empress Catherine, uh, Orthodox, in Russia, had accepted the Jesuits, they sent a formal protest. And Empress Catherine wrote a letter to the king of Spain, much more sensible than him. He said, I wish to inform your majesty about my determination to keep in my territories the Institute of the Society of Jesus. And as I did not oppose you when you suppressed the Jesuits in your kingdom, I hope your majesty will not oppose what I am doing in my empire. That's a good answer for him. Later on, when he, after publishing, promulgating the um, brief of the expulsion, of the extinction, he, his health declined. He was always, couldn't sleep, always um, surrounded by images and the and he died within a few months. The suppression of the society meant 23,000 Jesuits. Suddenly, novices, brothers, and scholastics were thrown away. They had nothing. They, they were nothing. Well, they had no Jesuits, they had nothing. And the priests, well, the priests have to find everyone, uh, Episcopus Benevolus, a bishop that would accept them in the, in the diocese. Otherwise, many of them died of hunger. And that is, in, in that circumstances, when Father Pignatelli, since his family was rich and he had relations in Italy, could help hundreds of the old Jesuits. The day of the um, publication in Rome of the decree, Dominus Acre, the police came to the Jesuit house, to Father General. Father General, Father Ricci, was a saint, and was one of those men, I don't know how Father Rupe would have, Rupe would have reacted in that thing. Um, certainly, Father Rotam would have reacted very strongly. Father Richie was a very gentle and holy soul. He was taken and put in the jail of the castle of Sant'Angelo, Castel Sant'Angelo in Rome, in a miserable situation, alone, as a criminal, he was not allowed until he died uh, to meet any other Jesuit. And he was saying, but you explain to me, nobody spoke anything to him. That is a point against the Pope that he should have, especially for Cordara says that they put as a jailer, he said, hominem illum perfidiosissimum ad detectabile. Said one monsignor, that I would translate into English, an utterly evil and despicable man. There were in that territory 201 Jesuits, have two, uh, four high schools, and 12 mission stations. So, when the decree came to Russia, Empress says, who is the Pope who interfered in my territory? I don't allow this um, brief, this bull, or brief, to be promulgated. And technically speaking, unless it is promulgated, it has no mm, legal uh, position there. When the new pope, Pius VI, was elected after Clement XIV, the new pope did not dare openly to do anything, but verbally he told the secretary of the bishop of Vilna, tell the Jesuits to manage by themselves. And uh, it was later on that the Pope um, Pius VII, the one that restored, or in the year 1803, 1803 um, had sent a letter to the Jesuits. Um, the superior have died, and they were going to choose a new one. And he said, don't call him Vicar General, call him General, um, for that Tadeus the first one. And um, later on, on the fall of Napoleon, uh, 1812, he was, a, uh, he was under Napoleon in Fontainebleau in Paris, a prisoner for two years. When Napoleon fell, he went back to Rome. And the first 
he, did he think, uh, thing he did was precisely the restoration of the society of Jesus. And the Pope says, in these storm-tossed seas, the ocean, storm-tossed barco, St. Peter, I need skilled rowers. And it is the Jesuits themselves, if they remain true to the Ignatian legacy, they will be my best helpers. And in the year 1745 or so, the aristocracy of Madrid went to the Jesuit provincial and said, she are sons that are aristocrats, blue blood. They have to mix there in the school with those sons of merchants. So we want a different school separate for us, and we shall pay fees. We shall do everything so that the Jesuits studied it and fell in the trap. And they began a school with fees, which was only for the rich. And actually, from this school came out those who persecuted us later on. Of the Jesuits that were younger, the society was suppressed, as I said, 23,000 Jesuits, but there may have been 5,000 still priests that would work well. 46 were elected by the Holy See during Pius VII. So those that were considered criminals and rebels and uh, of immense uh, vices and all that, they were elected as bishops of important places. One of them is Bishop John Carroll, first Archbishop of Baltimore in America, and one of the leading figures of the uh, North American Church, or the beginning of the Church in North America. So 46 of them were chosen as bishops. See a few insights still. We had mentioned that the society has had 817 high schools in Europe in the year 1750. All of them were free of charge. From first standard to university, the Jesuits, all the colleges were free of charge. We build immense churches. The Jesuits in Rome is good to have, but also St. Ignatius in Rome. The Jesuits had already been built. Well, we built St. Ignatius, so huge and the very rich. And in Austria, we had the Baroque churches. Would have not been better to follow the um, Cistercian ideal of total simplicity in architecture. Architecture, has, architecture itself has to be the beauty. See, the altar of St. Ignatius in the Jesu is probably one of the most expensive monuments in the world. It has got four, you have in lapis lazuli mm, columns, which is, that is priceless, <laughs> priceless. And therefore, I don't know, but the, see, when we build a high school, it's for the people. Also a church is for worship, but the, mm, I don't think that, the, see, the, in Europe at the time, the gold and silver that was put, actually we use much, much less than the Hindu temples here, but it is not, it's not the right thing to spend money in these things. St. Ignatius made us the, one of the four vows that we made after the, in, in the, the time of the solemn vows, not to accept dignities. But that is a totally um, relic of the past. I think some of you, any general congregation future, you tell the general congregation, suppress this because at that time to be a bishop was to be a prince, lord of several villages, managing plenty of money. And he, he had usually a priest to do the apostolic work. Today to be a bishop is really a difficult job and purely religious job. And the church in many, many places searching for a bishop you have the Jesuits there. In my opinion, the Jesuits in those years were imbued with the spirit of St. Ignatius, and um, they were efficient, tireless, and successful. These things were successful because the Jesuits lived the spirit of St. Ignatius, which means the spirit of the exercises. And I think that any concrete measure that we would like to have to live today, to represent, really, to serve the church, to serve the people, it will have to be 
to come from the exercises. If we become really men of the exercises, everything else will be easy for us. <laughs>